Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today what we're going to do is look at the server admin uh, application uh, and talk a little bit about how you can do Apple's updates, have those stored on your server and pushed to all of your computers through software update. Now, Server Admin is an application that doesn't come bundled with the server application. Uh, to get that, you need to go to uh, Apple's uh, website and you want to download the uh, Server Admin package so that you can get both the Server Admin application and the Workgroup Manager application. And in previous screencasts, I've uh, talked about how to do that. I'll also put a link uh, in the notes here so that you know where to go to get these applications to make this happen. Now today, like I said, we're going to talk about how you can make your own server a um, software update server so that people and computers in your network don't have to go out and get their own updates, but they can get them from your server. Now the question is, why would I want to do that? Why wouldn't I just do it from Apple? Well, there's a number of reasons why you might want to do that. The, the first is, is to be able to control what updates go on what computers. So if you're at home, you've got kids, you don't want them to update certain things, or maybe you know that a particular update, uh, maybe a new combo update or something like that, uh, causes problems, causes some of your programs to break, and you want to wait until those uh, programs update themselves for the new software update, you can turn on and off what updates are allowed on different computers, and that allows you then to control those, those circumstances. Uh, the other thing, too, is that it really controls bandwidth. Uh, if you've ever tried to connect uh, through your modem and your, your broadband to Apple servers, a lot of times it takes a while for them to determine what updates you need and can take a while to download and install those things, whereas if your server is already doing that in the background, as soon as those updates are available, they're right there, they're easy for your computers to download and they happen rather quickly. So let me just uh, show you how that works. Uh, it's a, a fairly simple process, but let me just show you. When you go into server admin uh, application here, you want to wait till it's all set up. You want to wait, usually there's a little spinning wheel down here, you want to wait till that stops. And you want to go to the settings area right here. In the settings area you'll notice uh, there's a service tab right here that we click and there are all these different services that you need to enable and you can see software update is one of those services. So you click the software update service and you click save. And what happens is the spinning wheel goes and it now starts to set up the server uh, software update uh, service for you. And so we're going to wait here, and once that's done, the, so, uh, the update will show on this side. And so you can see, now we've got the check here, and we've got a new service over here. Now remember, the green means that the service is operating. The uh, non-green bubble, the gray one, means that it's not on. So right now, software update isn't on. But let's go take a look and, and just see what it looks like in here. And you can see there are, there's a, a different number of tabs. There's an overview here where it says whether the service has stopped or started, when it started, that kind of thing. You've got uh, a log file so that as different logs come in for the things that you download, it'll show up here. You've got your list of updates that when we download the updates, they're going to show up here. And this is where you'll be able to turn them on and off. And then we have settings. And so to set this up, there are really only a few settings. You can limit the user bandwidth to a certain amount. So if you've got a lot of computers on your uh, network and you don't want them all downloading things at the same time, you can actually you can actually limit their bandwidth so it doesn't uh, so that one computer doesn't hog all the bandwidth when you're trying to do updates. Uh, in a home situation, probably not a big deal, but in a uh, corporate situation, a bigger deal. So I'm going to leave that alone. I don't need to worry about that. Next, you've got store updates in, and it has this default area to store them in. Now this is going to store them actually on uh, your main boot drive of your server. And, and I would recommend storing them somewhere else. When you set up this service, it's going to download uh, gigabytes of updates because it's going to download just about all of them. Uh, and so you're going to want to have some space to do that. So if you just click this little choose area here, you can move where those things are stored. You can see right now it's stored in var, database, the SWUPD, which stands for software update and then it's stored in this folder right here and that's where all this information is. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to uh, choose our own folder. We're not going to use the ones that are here and I'm just going to slide this over for a minute and I'm going to stick them on my Drobo and I'm going to load the information here and I'm going to create a new folder in my Drobo that just says software update. Okay, software updates. I'm going to create a new folder here and so now that's available on my Drobo and I'm just going to click choose. 
So now you can see it's changed it to uh, this folder that I just set up and that's where they're going to store now. Now you can see it says provide updates using port and it gives a port that it's going to use. Now if you're an advanced user you want to change the port you can do that here and I'll show you you just have to make sure that you change that uh, on each of your computers so they know what port to ping when they're looking for their updates. But again that's a standard port I just leave that alone if you're a home user don't worry about it. Now down here you can start to specify what you want to copy and so if I click this copy and I can copy all of the updates right and automatically enable those copied updates or what I can do is I can say all new ones if I wanted to so I can say all or all new uh, and so what I'm gonna do is uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it on all right now uh, I'll put all new but I got a feeling that because I'm updated nothing is gonna download if I do that but uh, so if that's the case I'm gonna need to come in and change that but I'll, just, I'll put all new for right now so that I don't backlog everything but I may need to change that just for the purposes of showing us how this works and then you can de delete outdated software updates and I'm gonna check that because I really have no reason to keep those things around I just wanna make it quick and efficient for people to get a hold of these software updates so once all of that's done again very simple setup I can start the software update service so just click this button here that says to start the service it asks if I want to save the changes that I've made up here I'm gonna say yes save those things and now it's okay going to go now as you can see the software update is running I've got a green light so we know everything's happening and now my server is going onto the internet to pull down the updates now this can take some time to download these things so you got to give yourself some time for it and some space because it is going to do the server if you've ever run software update you know it takes some time I've run it for a little while here so let me just see the updates and as you can see your updates start to show up right here and you can see which ones have been copied and which ones haven't depending on what needs to be updated and what doesn't I can sort them in any way that I want I can sort them by name I can sort them by version size so I can see what are the what are some of the biggest sizes of updates so here's some pretty big ones with the updates combined and things like that so those are big updates I can also do it by post date so that I can see okay look at these are the most recent ones posted do I want to enable these uh, to make them happen I can do that and so I can check whatever I want to enable I can come in here and say well yeah I want to I want to enable different uh, different uh, options here because I want those available now you'll notice a couple of things that I want to show you these are copied okay you can see these are already copied everything's there they're ready to go and ready to be served up and you can see the copy now button is is out uh, I can also see here though there are other ones that haven't been copied and, and partly because I haven't had anything on my system related to these or they're already updated and you can see well here's an aperture update and I've already updated that but if I wanted to if I just clicked copy now uh, it would then go out and go about copying this file to make it available for me to be able to update it and then once that's copied I'll be able to check this box to enable it and then that update will be available to all of my computers so that they can update off my server so now that we have the updates ready to go we can see the software updates they're right here in the window let's go over now and take a look at how we set up clients now to receive those updates okay now that we've got software update running and we've got uh, downloads happening to our server we need now to point all of our client machines to the server to make these downloads happen now there's a couple of ways to do this and Apple has outlined this on their um, on their website on how to point clients to a software update and so there are a couple of ways we can do that uh, basically you're, we're gonna wanna point our clients to your domain name with a colon to the port 8088 to the file index.su catalog alright and what's gonna happen is that's gonna allow them to update it now there's a couple ways we can do it like I said I can do it through profile manager I can do it through workgroup manager or I can even do it through the command line right here by just going on the client opening up a terminal and typing in sudo defaults right and then this information here and so that's one of the things I can do so what I'm gonna do is show you how to do it with profile manager since we've already got that set up it makes it easier to push the information to where we want it to go so let me show you how that works so if we come into server here we open up our profile manager we can do that just by clicking the link here and the web page comes up and I'm already logged in normally you would have to log in and what we'll do is go to our device groups in this case I'm gonna to go to my device groups because I have a group for desktop Macs so you can go into whatever your your Mac is whatever computers you want to use this you go into desktop Macs you go to edit on here and then you're going to scroll down to where it says software update for the Mac OS system it says software update you click that click configure 
And then in here is where we're going to put that URL. And what's nice, it kind of gives us the format that we're supposed to use right here. And so you just put in HTTP colon backslash. You put in your server name. All right. You put the colon 8088 slash index dot SU catalog. All right. So now I've got that. It matches this. And then I click OK and just click that. And now it shows that software update is configured and ready to go. All I've got to do then is click Save, and then that profile begins to be pushed out to my Macs as soon as the Macs come live. So as soon as they open it up and everything's ready to go, the push notification service will then push uh, this, uh, this change to the configuration profile out to your Macs. And now your Macintoshes, all of your different computers, will begin to access your server to get their software updates. Now, one other thing, this does not work at this point for iOS devices. So iOS updates still have to go through the individual devices. They don't go through your central server, at least at this point. Maybe Apple will change that in the future and give us the opportunity to do that, but at this point they haven't. So that's how you set up software update on your server, and that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.